Thank you for joining us as we elevate the Black entrepreneur experience by interviewing CEOs, thought leaders, innovative thinkers, and Black entrepreneurs across the globe. I'm your host, Dr. Francis Richards. Our next guest is a mindset coach and business mentor that help coaches free themselves to show up fully, attract the right clients at the right price, and leap to five, six-figure months with simplicity and ease. Welcome, Desiree Stanford. Thank you for having me. Super excited to be here. I've given our audience such a brief bio. Why don't you fill in the gaps and share with our audience what you want them to know about you and your business? Hmm. What I want people to know about me, I feel like I'm probably a, a, an empowerment coach <laughs> trapped in, in, in the business packaging. I really care about helping entrepreneurs reclaim their authority. A lot of people will build their businesses um, based on some outdated model of what they think they need to do. And it's disheartening when you get to a certain level of success and you realize that your business perhaps isn't the business of your dreams, right? It's the business that you've built. You've made some money, um, but there are a lot of hiccups, if you will, uh, and you feel like you're the bottleneck. And what I love to do with my clients is really help them take a step back, reevaluate, and really get clear about the vision that they have for themselves and then build the business around that. That doesn't mean we have to tear everything apart, but it does mean that you have to show up differently. You have to literally prioritize yourself uh, and you can make a bigger impact and more income when you do that as well. Talk about that aha moment when you knew that you um, were going to be successful in your business. Hmm, that's a great question. I think the aha moment was when I finally stopped telling myself this story that I was a failure. Do you know, like I started this business as a coach after a, a failure in, in a previous business. I was a partner in a multiple seven figure company and we were successful for two years and then we closed. And then my partner went off and he partnered with other investors and he became, you know, a multimillionaire. And I went back to work feeling like a complete failure. <laughs> and that story stuck with me for a while. Even when I first started coaching, one of the reasons, in fact, that I started coaching was because when I found out about it, I realized this is something I've been doing my entire life. And had I had a coach in my corner, I would not have made the choice to step back and go back to corporate feeling like there was something wrong with me. I would recognize that some of the stuff that I was experiencing was actually growing pains. You know, it was an opportunity for me to grow, for me to expand rather than feeling like I wasn't cut out to be an entrepreneur. And so when I got into the field of coaching, I specifically wanted to help other entrepreneurs with their mindset so they wouldn't have to, they wouldn't keep second guessing themselves the way that I did. Uh, and they wouldn't stop make, or they would stop making experiences of failure and disappointment mean that they themselves were failures or that they themselves were not cut out to achieve the level of success that they know that they were capable of. So for me, it was really getting in touch with the story that I was telling myself and deciding that that story was never the truth. <laughs> you know, even when I look back on it and, and I had my own coach help me reevaluate the story, I was like, wait, I didn't fail at all. You know, like I, and that's another thing we can, we can take all of the right steps and not get the result and assume that that means that we failed when that's not the truth. And I actually didn't fail in that experience. It was just the story that I had been carrying forward. And once I was able to clean that story up, that's when I knew I could be successful. So you talked about you um, had had a business, had a partner, and then you went back to corporate America. Mm -hmm. What was that time frame before you actually did another day quit? About three years. I was scared. <laughs> now here's the deal. I still, I worked coaching part-time. I think I did coaching part-time for maybe a year and a half, not a hundred percent sure. Um, but I, I did coach part-time. Like as soon as I went back to corporate, my mother of all people calls me up one day and she's like, uh, you should look into being a life coach. I heard someone on the radio who's a life coach. And since you like to tell people what to do, <laughs> that might be a good career for you. And I was like, by the way, I had been coaching all of my life. I just didn't know that it was a profession. I didn't know you could get paid for it. Um, and so when I looked into it, I was like, this is exactly what I wanted to do. And so I did get certified while I still had a full-time job. I also had another business on the side as well. I've been very busy. <laughs> so I didn't completely leave entrepreneurship, but I stopped doing it full-time. In other words, I went back to corporate because I felt like I needed this safety net. And it was really honestly a way for me to hide. I was hiding out in corporate because I was afraid. I was afraid that I wasn't cut out to do this full-time on my own again. 
And so while I was in corporate, I was working a little bit through my story. Um, and then I was there for about a year and a half working. I had my own uh, business. I also had the full-time job. And then I had also started coaching part-time for somebody else. So I was gaining some experience that way. Um, but then, you know, it took me a while to actually leave the corporate world altogether. I actually had to be laid off. No, I wasn't laid off. I was fired from this particular job. I've been laid off countless times, which was an, 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 a sign to me that I'm not employable. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm meant to be out on my own. But this instance, I actually was let go. And, and I'm so grateful that it happened because it gave me the push that I needed for me to like remember how to fly, you know? And I, within two months after being fired from that job, I hustled, I, I got a new mentor. Um, I did the things I needed to do and I had my first 30K month. So it was the best thing that ever happened to me, but I needed that push. That is awesome. And thank you for being so authentic, talking about that hybrid moment when you were had your hustle and grind. And I know a lot of people don't like the hustle and grind, but you, the, you had the nine to faint and you were building your own coaching business on the side. And so thank you for being so authentic. Fill in the blank. Thank you to pandemic because... Mm, that's a great question. Um, I would say thank you pandemic because it encouraged me to develop a stronger relationship with myself. I had already been working on that, but when you don't have the ability to move about and distract yourself with whatever, with, with everything that's going on around you, in my case, it really encouraged me to look within. It really encouraged me to do some deeper work within myself to, to reinforce that relationship, I would say with myself, which actually helped my business flourish even more. Because, you know, when, when things change in the world and you can't do things the way that you normally do it, it's either going to cause you to grow or it's going to cause you to shrink. Right. And so in my case, I'm so grateful that I had the support that actually encouraged me to, to really grow. Talk about your ideal client. Hmm. I love entrepreneurs who are ambitious. It's my thing. I love people who care about making more money, yes, and also making a bigger impact. The, the kinds of clients that I love to work with are the kinds of clients who recognize that the work that they do is transformational and the work that they do is going to change so many more lives. It's really important to me that my clients recognize how important they are, that my clients recognize how much they matter, that my clients realize the massive value that they're adding to their clients' lives. So many of the people that I work with are smart, they're intelligent, they are uh, hardworking. They will bend over backwards, right, to serve their people, but they also often struggle to really appreciate and celebrate themselves. And so the work that I love to do with my clients is helping them create a little bit of a balance there, right, between wanting to make a bigger impact, but realizing that you've got to pour into yourself first, realizing that you actually have to prioritize yourself. You have to please yourself first. And the more you do that, the more you actually have the bandwidth to serve your clients and the world at large more powerfully. There are so many brands and businesses that are dominating. Talk about a brand or business that's dominating that you admire and why. Hmm. This is a little bit challenging for me because I don't pay much attention to a lot of the brands. Um, I might say Apple because everybody talks about Apple. And what I know about Apple is that it's really for innovators. It's really for people who think outside of the box, which I love. I love people who are, we could call them disruptors or rule breakers, people who are not satisfied with the status quo, right? People who, who know that they are capable of making a change in the world and they're willing to go for it. Those are the kind of people who light me up. So any brand that represents that, I would be aligned. Well, not necessarily automatically aligned with, but I would be much more inclined to pay attention to. You talked about fear. How did you overcome your fear? Fear is something that I overcome every day, right? I think fear is something that is normal. And I think a lot of people, a lot of entrepreneurs really need to understand that because we, we tend to think that if we're afraid, it means that we should stop. It means that something is wrong. But it's our brain, it's, it's basically our brain working for us, right? It can I also feel like it's working against us, but our brain is designed to protect us. So our brain is going to look for things that cause us to feel fear. And then it's our opportunity when we do feel that fear to untangle whatever story we're telling ourselves so we can come back to truth. So we can come back to a feeling of safety, which we get to create for ourselves within. 
what is the biggest impact you're making daily? Mm. I'm going to say that my biggest impact is allowing myself to be the best version of myself. And that helps me serve my clients more powerfully. In other words, it helps me uh, model for my clients what that looks like. And then they do that. And then they model that for their clients. And then they model that for their clients. So I believe that our purpose as individuals is to um, expand. I believe that our purpose is to play a bigger game. And I believe that the more we're willing to do that, and it takes courage to do that, right? Because there's so much conditioning that says it's not safe, it's not okay, who do you think you are, that kind of stuff, you're too much, you're whatever the case may be. I believe that our real work in this world uh, as individuals is to challenge that conditioning. It's to challenge that narrative and to have the courage to be more true to ourselves. And the more we do that, the more we inspire other people to do the same. And that's where we get all the innovation from. And we get all the things that, that help make humanity a better place or better. <laughs> what is the best decision you have made as a leader? Mm -hmm. Learning to trust myself, I would say that's probably the best decision. Uh, and I think so many of us, that's what we want. We want to come back to um, trusting ourselves, being true to ourselves. I would say absolutely that's the best decision I could ever make, right? Because the more true that I am to myself, the more that I trust myself, the more I serve. Do you know? Like, I think that I believe that that's what we're here for. Alluding to what I mentioned earlier, I believe that service is a huge part of, at least for the people that I work with, we care about purpose, we care about mission, right? So for me, when I am trusting myself, when I'm being true to myself, then I can show up as that leader that I need to be. And I can make the impact that I really care about making. What is the best advice you were ever given? I've gotten so much advice. So let me think about this one. Uh, it might be to believe, just believe. Yeah, just believe. Believe. <laughs> in just other believe. words, believe in yourself. Yeah. What is your zone of genius? I feel that my zone of genius is helping my clients tap back into their zone of genius. And, and, untangling whatever stories are preventing them from showing up fully as the leader that they want to be. And I want you to talk to a younger you. Hmm. What advice would you give to a younger Desiree? Trust yourself. <laughs> it, would, it would keep coming back to that. Uh, it would come back to trusting yourself because I think that's what sends so many entrepreneurs astray, right? Like we're, we're constantly following someone else's, this is how you do the thing, rather than really trusting that we know how to do the thing. Uh, so I really believe in trusting your own inner guidance. It's, it's a huge part of the work I do with my clients is helping them tap back into that inner guidance because that's what's going to help help you get the results faster and easier anyway and, and actually enjoy yourself more, right? And I think that it's a kind of freedom that we're all looking for as well. So I would, I would tell myself, trust yourself. I would tell myself to keep going no matter what. I would tell myself, you've got this. I would tell myself anything that I could tell myself to encourage myself. I would tell myself that any thought that I have about myself that doesn't feel good is not the truth. I would tell myself these things. I would tell myself that I matter. I would tell myself that I make a difference. I would tell myself that, you know, it's okay that some people aren't going to like you. As long as you love yourself, you're going to attract more people who do love you. Like I would tell myself all of those things that would encourage me to keep going and keep growing. You have many successful stories mm -hmm. of clients mm -hmm. and only share what you feel that you can share. You don't have to share the name if you don't want. Tell us a story um, of one client that really stands out and, and how you help them. Okay, so all of my clients one, I will say that, I'll, I'll, I'll narrow it down to one, but I will say that many of my clients have this story in common, which is why I'm going to start here. I worked with a client um, not that long ago, and she was making about $2,000 a month. Brilliant person. And she was working really, really hard and could not figure out why she could not get to 10K a month. And 
you know, we partnered together. And one of the things that we worked on was her self-concept. It was her being able to see herself as the person who could make more money. And so we did that work. And within six weeks, she went from averaging $2,000 a month to making almost $60,000 in such a short time frame. So we worked on her self-concept, number one. That's what helped her give herself permission to create. Uh, she already had offers in place, but it gave her herself permission to charge more, to speak her truth in her marketing Right. So she stopped biting her tongue and she showed up as the leader that she wanted to be. And she said what she really wanted to say. And she became magnetic to the clients that she wanted to work with this. And, and the thing on top of that, the money. And, and she even said that she's like beyond the money. It was her finally being uh, OK with being herself, that that was a real gift. And that to me is what it's all about, at least with the clients that I work with. You know, it's, I love helping people make more money. I love helping them charge more and, and all the business. I love that. But my secret goal, if you will, is to have my clients feel the way this client felt. And I just had another client say that basically the same thing. She's like, I feel more true to myself. Do you know, I'm not chasing after clients anymore. I'm not feeling attached to the sale anymore. This is what I care about. When, when a client can really own their value and their worth, and they realize how important they are and they realize the difference that they add to their clients' lives and they get to lean back a little bit and allow the clients to step up and, and pick up what they're putting down and get the bigger results that they know are possible. I feel like everybody wins. And that's what I love. There are so many risks and there's rewards in being an entrepreneur. Talk about the worst moment in business and what was your takeaway? I always feel like the worst moment in business is when you doubt yourself. Do you know, like we think it's, oh, I didn't make the sale or, you know, like I was late on my bill or whatever the case may be. I don't think that's the worst because those are just neutral circumstances. To me, the worst is when you don't believe in yourself. The worst is when you start beating up on yourself. That is the worst, right? So then the, the best, in my opinion, is when you love and accept yourself unconditionally. When regardless of your circumstance, you're like, I am worth this. I can do this. So that's the best and the worst for me. Talk about legacy. When it's all said and done, how do you want to be remembered? Oh, I love the question. You have such great questions. Oh, wow. I want to be remembered. Oh, I think I'm going to get emotional. <laughs> I want to be remembered as someone who encourages people to be free, to be who they really are. And the reason I this matters to me so much is because I feel like that's how we help humanity. I feel like there are so many people who have had, myself included, who've, who've grown up in experiences that were not, and listen, not everybody's childhood is going to be perfect. And that's just what it is, right? And, and we get to learn and we get to grow from the things that we experienced in our childhood that wasn't ideal. But I also believe, excuse my dog, because she's going to chime in here. <laughs> but I also believe that we can do our best to make um, life better for ourselves and for future generations. And I believe that that really stems from our understanding of the role that we play in, in, in our own lives, in our in the, the life or the relationship we have with our partner, with our kids, with our parents, with our friends. Like we matter. And the energy that we're cultivating based on how we choose to think and feel about ourselves is what's permeating and what's impacting people that we don't even know. Right. And I think when we can recognize that and we can take responsibility for that and we can choose to be the next best version of ourselves, then that is how we change the world. And, and to me, that always comes back to being true to who you really are. It's, it's about freeing yourself from the people pleasing and the perfectionism and the imposter syndrome and all the things that make you think that you're not good enough. Right. And remembering the truth that you were born worthy and nothing could ever change that. And the more you do that, the more you allow yourself to rise and shine the way that you're intended to, the more you're impacting people, even unconsciously in a very positive way. If there's one problem that you could solve in the world today, what would that problem be? Probably low self-worth, low self-esteem. That's the cause of everything, in my opinion. Like when you raise your, several, your level of self-worth, um, the way that you uh, value yourself, that's how you make more money. That's how you help more people, right? That's how you are able to put yourself in a position where you can give back to causes that really matter to you, right? So it's it's always, in my opinion, it's about 
the individual recognizing how much they matter and how much power they have right now, regardless of their circumstances. Is there a social cause tied to your business? There isn't one directly, no. The word is listening. What is that resounding sound or message that your generation is saying that we should be listening to? Hmm. So the phrase that just came up for me was speak up. And I think that has to do with a lot of the clients I work with uh, tend to find themselves hiding in plain sight. They, they, they're, they're choosing to hide in plain sight and often they don't recognize why or how to change that. Um, and so what I'm really passionate about is helping them speak up, raise their voices. Uh, that's part of, again, of being true to who they really are. Like they have something to say, something that's gonna change other people's lives. And it's not that they're not showing up, they're just not being they're just not shining as brightly as they could. And so if I could encourage, if I feel like my voice plays a role in, in my generation's um, you know, message, if you will, it would be to speak up. It would be to, to share your truth. It would be to live authentically, right? And let your, your life and, and how you're showing up in the world model for other people who wanna do the same. Talk about self-care. What does self-care look like for you? Honestly, I used to think self-care was like getting manicures and stuff like that. And right now, I believe that self self-care is more about your mental and emotional health. Like that to me is what real self-care is. And I think that inspires all of the other things that you want to do. If you want to get your manicure done, your pedicure, you want to travel, you want to do all those things. I think if you take care of your mental and emotional well-being first, then you're going to do those other things without the guilt, without the shame, <laughs> right? Uh, and you're just going to be in a better place overall. What fills your cup and bring you joy? So it's twofold. It is the relationship that I have with myself. It's the conversation that I, ongoing conversation that I have with myself, which is huge because for a very large majority of my life, um, the conversation with myself was negative. You know, I was, I was very often beating up on myself and I would, I would achieve things. A lot of times high achievers, we can achieve stuff but we are not necessarily very good with ourselves. And I was one of those people, like I would beat up on myself constantly. So to see that shift in the dialogue that I have with myself is really impressive to me. And then also the work that I do with my clients, cause I help them do the same thing. I help them shift the conversation with themselves. I help them celebrate themselves more. I help them realize how much they matter. And so it, it, it feels like a legacy to me because when I help my clients, many of them have kids and some of them want to have kids. Um, it then impacts their kids and or their future kids and their future grandkids and the future great grandkids, right? And like, to me, that's legacy, you know? Plus obviously it impacts their clients and their partner and, and everyone else who's involved in their life. I want you to have a monologue. I want you to name this person living or not. And this person has inspired you so much. Name that person and what are you saying specifically? Hmm. The first person who comes to mind is Oprah. I used to want to be Oprah. <laughs> I, used, I used to want, I was like, I'm still waiting for her to retire so I can take her role. Because <laughs> I wanted to, I wanted to be just like her. I love, I love, you know, if I was talking to Oprah right now, one of the things that I would say that really inspires me is her commitment to being true to herself. At least that's how she appears to me. And her commitment to um, helping other people be true to themselves. That's, that's one of the things that I love the most about her, her authenticity, her willingness to, um, to show who she really was. I find that so attractive in people. I, I find it so admirable in people because I think that it, it helps the rest of us um, embrace ourselves, right? I think so many people are walking around feeling shamed of who they are, especially uh, many of the clients that I work with are really powerful women. And I find that many of them have felt shame about who they are, just as I just as I felt shame, like ashamed of being too much, ashamed of being too smart, ashamed of being too independent, ashamed of being too intimidating, whatever it is that we were called and shamed for, right? And Oprah to me represents a woman who was all of those things, but she doesn't feel ashamed of it, right? She shows up and she shines brightly and she encourages other women to do the same, other people to do the same. And I love that about her.
What breaks your heart? People not believing in themselves. That breaks my heart. Tell a story around that moment when you had that shift, when you were able to pivot from the, you're more to really owning your voice. So this is interesting. I have always been fairly outspoken. I'm an introvert, um, but I know how to say what's on my mind. I would say that what was interesting about it though was I would say what was on my mind, but because I often experienced so much pushback of being too direct, all these kinds of things, the, the judgment that I got because of it, while I would speak my truth, I felt very unsettled speaking my truth. I didn't like myself for speaking my truth, right? Like because most people didn't like it. And I would say it's in the last few years and I can't think of what specifically, because I feel like the work that I do uh, uh, redeveloping my or reconnecting with myself, it causes the shifts that I that I want people to experience, but it happens gradually. So I, I can't think of one specific moment, if you will, that was the, do you know? But I can just tell you that the, the way that I feel now is completely different, meaning that I still will speak my truth, but now I'm patting myself on the back for it. I'm like, yeah, that was, I, I appreciate you said that, you know what I mean? Rather than judging myself for it, rather than being upset with myself, like why couldn't you just go along to get along? Cause that's not who I am. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like I see things differently. I have a powerful perspective that can help my people change their lives. And I'm going to be willing to say it. And I don't feel uncomfortable speaking my truth anymore. That is huge to me. What was your biggest win over the last 30 days? Hmm. Over the last 30 days. Hmm. Nothing, nothing specifically comes to mind because I wouldn't call it my biggest win. I feel like every day getting up and showing up as myself is a win. So it doesn't feel like this big thing. It feels like, well, it, it's kind of a big thing, but it's not one thing. It's me being me. It's me showing up the way that I want to show up every day. That to me is my biggest win, if you will. I used to look at my wins as my accomplishments. I used to look at my wins as how much money I made, how many clients I signed, those kinds of things. I don't see my wins that way anymore. To me, my win, I win every day. If at the end of the day, I'm proud of how I showed up. How do you celebrate your wins? Usually it's with conversation with myself. Sometimes it's going out to dinner. Sometimes it's going on a trip. It could be so many different things. But I think for me, the primary way that I celebrate my wins is my self-acknowledgement. It's, it's me giving it to myself rather than waiting for that pat on the back, rather than waiting for someone else to validate me. What is the biggest impact or... So I want to say, what is the message? Someone is listening to this interview. What takeaway do you want them to take from this interview? I would say, trust yourself. I would say that. And I, I think I say that a lot um, because that's an area where I struggle the most and where a lot of my clients have struggled the most. Brilliant, smart. Oh, I keep saying the same thing, but smart, smart. Um, you know, willing to work hard, those kinds of women who, and men as well, who will give everything their all, but there's still this feeling of, it's not safe to be who I really am. It's not safe to trust my big ideas. It's not safe to ask for what I want. And I really want the message to be that it's always safe. That anything that you might've experienced, any circumstance you might be going through right now has no bearing on what's possible for you. And, and the way that you're gonna move through it and you're going to get to the next level, whatever that might look like for you, is if you do trust yourself. And that does take work. It's it's not a, you, you just say it and you trust yourself, right? Like you have to work at untangling whatever stories get in the way. And quite frankly, those stories will bubble up <laughs> usually on a daily basis. So you've got to be doing the work to uh, manage those thoughts and to manage your emotions around it so that you can trust yourself and you can move. You can make the big, bold moves that you're here to make. And take us down the um, client experience. If someone works with you, Desiree, what would they experience? Well, the first thing is we're going to get clear on their vision, right? 
So I like to go for the big vision. What's the thing that you want, right? And then we need to figure out why do you not have it yet? What are you telling yourself? So this is how we start to look at what's a new identity that we have to craft. What, what's the identity we have to let go of? And what's a new identity that we have to adopt so that you then become a match of the vision. In other words, you then feel like you can actually realize this vision. And then for because of the way that I work with my clients and helping them grow their businesses around their lifestyle, we will look at that. What's the desired lifestyle? And then how do we uh, shape your business model that allows for that so that the business is built around you rather than you being the last person on your list? And oftentimes that looks like increasing their prices. Most of my clients desire to have a streamlined business. So they don't want a whole bunch of employees. They don't want a whole bunch of products. They don't want, you know, to spend a lot of money on all these different things um, that overcomplicate their business. What they really want is to make a lot more money, make a bigger impact and have more time for themselves and their families, right? So that's what I like to help them do. So we look at the business model and how we can redesign that. And what's the pricing that feels aligned in consideration of the lifestyle that you want and the value that you add to your clients' lives. And we build the, the offers based on that. And then it's also the marketing. How do we then go out into the marketplace uh, and help you, you know, really speak your truth unapologetically and communicate the value so powerfully that people show up ready to buy, right? And then how do you work through sales conversations with people, whether you're selling over the phone or whether you're selling in DMs or emails, right? Like, so I do all of that stuff with my clients. And then I would say probably the biggest part, which supports the identity is helping them master their energy on a daily basis. So this is sometimes evaluating what happened in a sales conversation. Sometimes it's evaluating, you know, if you haven't made a sale this week, what happened and what do we need to do differently so that you can make a sale next week? So it's looking at what's going on and helping the entrepreneur like manage their mental and their emotional state so that they maintain the energy that's a match to them, number one, showing up fully and also achieving the results that they want. So what can we do to support your business? I would say if you know anyone who is who desires to grow their business in a very streamlined way that is based on them being true to who they really are, send them my way. And how would they connect with you? How do they send it your send the client your way? Sure. So my website is powerhouseunleashed.com. I also am uh, very visible on Facebook as well as LinkedIn. And I am also on Instagram, but I don't, I don't, I don't really know that platform very well. <laughs> what is the first wound that you experience with a boss or a leader? The first wound? Ooh, uh, it was probably feeling like I couldn't speak up. I'm trying to think of, well, I can, I can think of one experience. I remember when I had gotten promoted to um, an HR position and I had no HR experience. That's another story. Um, but I, I was very ambitious and I, I walked myself down to the HR department and I said, listen, I need another position because I'm really burnt out on what I'm doing right now. And this is what I used to work in hospitality. I was at, the, I was a front desk agent and I had done it for too long and I was so bored. And I walked down to HR and I said, you have to find me something else to do because otherwise I have to leave because it's not challenging me anymore. And the HR manager took that to um, the director of HR and long story short, I was given a position in HR as a generalist. And I remember when I got that position, I had no support from the HR manager and she would often leave me in the office without any direction. And we're dealing with human resources. We're dealing with people's serious issues, you know what I'm saying? With their employment and things like that. You know, there's legal stuff involved and whatnot. And I had no idea what I was doing. And I remember maybe the first week going into the bathroom and just crying. Like, I can't believe, I felt like she set me up for failure. And I remember pulling myself together. I was like, Desiree, you're going to pull yourself together and you're going to figure it out. And I marched back into that office and I feel like I was like the rising star because I did figure it out. And I think that those kinds of experiences, I think I alluded to this before, those kinds of experiences can make us or break us. So I, 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 while we don't necessarily want to experience challenges, I find that if we have the right skill set, we have the right mindset and we also have the right skill set, we understand how to deal with our emotions, then there's no challenge that can actually break us. It might make us feel a little bit weak, it might make us feel a little bit like a victim in the moment, but then we remember who we are and then we rise. And I think that was probably one of the most memorable. I'm sure there were other challenges or wounds that I've experienced. 
But that was one of the most memorable because it turned, what I was able to do was turn the wound into wisdom. I was able to use that experience as an opportunity to connect back to my truth and pull the wisdom out of it. Like, remember, who are you, Desiree? What are you capable of? And what can you do? What do you have the power within your control to do right now? And that's what I leaned into. And I, and I rose in that position. In fact, I only had that position for about six months because they, they ended up terminating that position. And while I was in that position, I had given a presentation at one of our sister properties and I was hired at the sister property as a manager once that position went away. So it, it, everything works out for you if you trust that. If you lost everything, Desiree, and you have 30 days to rebuild, what would you do? What industry and why? Same industry I'm in because I'm absolutely in love with it. Um, and because it gives me the tools that I need. One of the things that I love about, I'm a coach and a mentor. And one of the things that I love about that is we get paid based on the value that we add to our clients' lives. And how do we create value with this, right? By understanding where our clients are. We have to become an expert in our clients. We understand where the client is. We understand where the client's going to go, wants to go. And then we understand what our unique genius is that helps bridge that gap between where the client is and where the client wants to go. So you don't need anything to do that. You can run your business from your phone. You can run your business from your laptop. You don't need an office. You don't need a team. You don't need anything other than the ability to understand where your clients are, where they're wanting to go, and your unique solution to helping them get there, which is based on your zone of genius. So you don't need anything outside of yourself, right? And then your ability to communicate that value, which is not a difficult thing to do on social media. Social media is a free opportunity for you to make a lot of money <laughs> helping people change their lives. Like it's, it's the best thing in the world. So that's what I would do. <laughs> Let's talk about becoming Desiree Stanford. How did you become? It's an ongoing process, <laughs> but I will tell you that I have not become by myself. I, I, have become with the support of other coaches and mentors with the support of the right coaches and mentors. I, I want to say that because sometimes we can partner with people who aren't the right fit. So you have to be willing to um, experience the growing pains. And I know that a lot of people will say that business is so hard and <laughs> business can be challenging. Excuse my dog. <laughs> she, she gets crazy. Business can be challenging. However, life, excuse me, Lily, life can be challenging. Right. So when I think about the kind of business that I run uh, and I know that my business isn't life or death, I'm not a, a surgeon, like I'm not a brain surgeon or anything like that. Right. Um, but I do realize how powerful my work is, you know, and so because of that, I am willing to, number one, do the work for myself. And then that gives me more confidence, more belief in what I do that allows me to really do the work powerfully with my clients. And I believe that when we understand how valuable our work is, then when we, how do I want to say this? When we understand how valuable our work is, you can't stop clients from buying from you, right? But you've got to own that value first. And I think so many entrepreneurs are not doing that. They're allowing the challenges to, they, they believe that the challenges are bigger than they are, but the challenges are not bigger than you. You are always bigger than anything that's coming before you. And the work, in my opinion, going back to what we talked about before, about our purpose being expansion, your work is to expand. Your work is to see the circumstance that's in front of you and choose to rise anyway, right? And I think that to me is the most powerful thing. So if you're ever like, you know, in a sales slump or anything like that, it's not because of the economy. It's not because people don't want to buy from you. It's because of how you're thinking and feeling. And you can shift that and you can shift it fast, right? Now it's a daily practice, right? But you you have to be willing to do that work. And that's how I become. Like for me, becoming is an ongoing daily process. It's not a one and done thing. It's not like, oh, I just woke up like this today. And that's just how it's going to be for the rest of my life. Who we're being is a practice, right? And you've got to continue in that practice. If you conducted this interview, what is the one question you would have asked yourself? I want you to ask the question and answer it. Mm. So the word, the, the question that comes up is, what's awesome about you, Desiree? And I would say what's awesome about me is that I know how to own my awesome without making that mean that other people around me aren't awesome too. You know, like to me, 
the confidence that I strive to, um, to, to, to share, if you will, or to model is that we can all be great. That I'm not great because I'm standing on somebody else or I'm not great because somebody else isn't great. I think we're all great in our own way. I think we all have a unique genius. I think we all have unique value to add to the world. And I love from, I love this in other people. And I also love that I do this in my own world and in, in, with my own clients, which is accepting that I am great and also leaving space for other people to accept and appreciate their greatness as well. Who are your top two influencers or mentors and what lessons did they teach you? Okay, so Oprah comes back again and Brene Brown is also coming up. Um, I like, we talked about Oprah and I think she's extraordinarily inspirational like and, and her willingness to be authentic. Oh, I have so many. Now I'm like Ian LeVan's aunt. Like I'm like, there's so many that I want to talk about. Um, but these are all women, in my opinion, who are so courageous to live their truth. That's what I love. I love people who are courageous. And, and, and I will say specifically women, and not that I don't appreciate a lot of men out there, I do. But I feel like, especially as a strong woman, I think, you know, we have had um, a lot of pushback, you know, like the words that I have been called that I won't repeat here because I was strong, because I, I I believed in something. Do you know what I'm saying? So I really appreciate when a woman is strong and she doesn't hide it uh, and she can show up and she can be all of who she wants to be. She can shine and not feel like, it's not that other people aren't gonna be intimidated. Some people will always be intimidated, but she doesn't make that mean anything about her. She doesn't cause that, she doesn't let that be a reason for her to shrink. I love women who are willing to shine brightly and, and people who are not okay with that, that's okay, right? I love the fact that Brene Brown, I like how she talks about shame and I love how she talks about vulnerability. I love Ianla because she really talks, in my opinion, about personal responsibility. I love those kinds of conversations because I think that those are the kind of conversations that can really change the world. I think if each individual would take more personal responsibility, we would stop hurting each other as much as we do. It's not that we can't. Um, it's not that we won't ever um, do things that cause harm to other people unintentionally, but if we could take responsibility and we could clean that up, um, you know, I think the world would be a, a better place overall. We've come to the part of our interview. It's called the rapid round of fun. I'm going to ask you a series of questions that I'd like you to give me very quick answers. If there's something you desire not to answer, feel free to say pass. Are yeah. you ready for the rapid round of fun? I'm ready. I'm as ready as I'm going to be. <laughs> Your ideal car. Ooh, uh, the uh, Rolls Royce Cullinan. What is your comfort food? Ah, uh, some kind of ice cream, like sea uh, sea salt. Car no, it's net um, Ben and Jerry's Netflix and chill. That's my new one. <laughs> the last movie you saw? Oh, geez, I don't remember. It was something funny though. Oh, Horrible Bosses too. You relax doing what? Hmm, probably reading. Your favorite singer or rapper? Easy. Whitney Houston, hands down. Your favorite dance song? Oh, too many. <laughs> too many to name. <laughs> what food you eat every week, no matter what? Mm, salmon, shrimp, <laughs> like every week. <laughs> uh, um, work out or hit the couch? Couch. <laughs> I probably shouldn't say it so emphatically, but couch. <laughs> Thank you so much, Desiree, for joining us on Black Entrepreneur Experience Podcast. Before we let you go, share with our audience the best way for them to connect with you and do business with you and feel free to leave all your social media handles. Okay. So uh, the best way to connect with me is on Facebook, which is, I think it's facebook.com forward slash Desiree HPI, I believe. And then I'm also on LinkedIn, which is just the LinkedIn slash, you know, I N, I believe, slash Desiree Stafford. And then uh, my website is also a great place to reach me, which is um, powerhouseunleashed.com. And there I also have a free gift if anybody's interested. There's a free masterclass as well. Thank you, Desiree. That's a wrap. Thank you.